Woe is Willie's. Surprise Zida dividend. Elections, central bank meetings galore. Pepco sells 7 out of 10 smartphones in South Africa. BHP walks away, but it's not over. This is JC Direct 589 for 30 May. My name is Simon Brown. I suppose let's kick off with those elections. I'm recording just ahead of one o'clock on uh, Thursday, and and the results are coming in, but the results are are slow. There are fully uh, what's it three ballots to count, which is well more than the two we used to have, so fifty percent more. Uh, we've got a a very small official count so far, eighteen point seven percent. But the one that matters is the CSIR. They do a Analysis when we hit 5% of the vote count. This isn't a poll. This is a prediction once we've hit 5%. In the past, they have been very, very accurate. They're pulling up the ANC 42, uh, DA 22, EFF 9, MK, call it 14, uh, and Patrick Alliance, call it 2. So uh, quite a short answer is this is spooking the market, although we're now seeing some other poll suggestions saying, no, ANC closer to 44, 45. Point being is that that, that ANC coming anywhere near the, the, the sort of you know, high 40s is very much off the table. Uh, markets are spooked. Markets are, are saying, well, hang on a second. Does this mean that the ANC needs to go with either EFF or MK to get a majority? Uh, certainly, Gauteng is lost to the ANC majority. KZN is lost to the ANC majority. Uh, DA retains the Western Cape. We've seen the RAND 1834 when it was trading on Tuesday morning. Uh, 1844 this morning when I first uh, got up early to do my money web show. And if we look at where the rand is now, it's improved a fair bit. It's at 1861, but it had been at 1876. Our market generally is taking a fair bit of pounding today. That, I suspect, partly in the back of we were closed yesterday and markets were red Tuesday and Wednesday. We had some catching up to do, but some worries as well. Naturally, we keep an eye on that. We will see how it goes. Got two events coming up. One on 20 June, trading as a side hustle. It's a power hour with Standard Bank in person or webcast. And then 25 June, 11 o'clock on the Tuesday morning, we're looking at uh, income from investing, whether that be REITs, real estate investment trusts, or bonds, local or offshore. We'll be chatting about those. Just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking. And of course, we also got the commodity webcast I did with one invest, Johan Erasmus, earlier in the week. Really great insights into gold, into PGMs, into copper. The man just knows a ton about a ton. You find that on the homepage, justonelap.com. So let's have a quick talk around the PEPCO result. Some decent numbers all in. I mean, absolutely not a shabby set of numbers. There's some moving parts uh, which kind of skew it a little bit, but not too badly. Uh, they saw almost, what, 9.5% growth in revenue, 24.5% growth in fintech to 5.8 billion. That's putting fintech at about 12% of the business. The stat that stood out for me, 7 out of 10 s smartphones in South Africa are sold by the PEP group. Now, if you're buying a fancy Apple or Samsung, you're not those seven, you're the three, but it seems that pretty much everyone else is doing it. There's a, I've seen some of the shop rights and in fact, some of the pick and pays as well. Sorry, checkers and pick and pays. They have these electronic slash fintech sectors within their stores, sections, right? Where you can buy fintech goods, be it yeah, speakers or phones or something. There's ne never anybody there. There's not even someone there to assist you. But you go to a, a, a PEP, you go to an Ackermans, there are queues at these, store, at these stands. Absolutely, they own that market. Uh, Brazil doing well, uh, accelerating there. In many ways, this is kind of our clothing shop right, if, if that makes sense. I, I'm not going to say that they're necessarily eating the lunch uh, of everybody else like shop writers, but certainly in terms of the, the skills, the fact that they can target low LSMs, uh, and the fact that they are picking up market share. It's an interesting chart, 20 rand is some resistance. We'll see what it does there. Uh, it's down quite markedly, as I recall this Thursday afternoon. Market not massively thrilled by it. But if you want to know about not massively thrilled, 
have a gander at the Woolies numbers. Their earnings are going to be 20% down for the year. And that's the 53 weeks ending June. They get an extra week and they still can't quite do it. Stock off 6.5%. The key thing is clothing. They say they expect it to remain challenging considering blah, blah, blah. We get all of that. But what they were really hoping for was a pickup. And it's just not coming. They say trading conditions in the second half to date have ever proven tougher than expected for the apparel business, further deterioration in footfall and discretionary spend in both geographies. Food is doing okay. Lacquer. But let's be clear. They bought in this fancy offshore and I have no doubt expensive CEO from Levi Strauss and clothing was his remit. And at the, at the half year set of numbers, I remember saying, Clothing's looking better, but can they keep the momentum? The answer is no, and the stock has been massively sold off. I got out of my willies a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I held them for an age. I'm like, you know what? If I want clothing, I can go find Pep or Mr. Price. If I want groceries, I take myself shop right, and Willie's just wasn't convincing, and that is an ugly-looking chart. That was not a good update. There was very little positive to say about that Willie's update, except that they're managing with the food and well, okay, but that's like really it. They're managing with the food. Everything else is looking somewhat dodgy. The other set of results, which I've been waiting for quite eagerly and finally did arrive is Zeda, the uh, car business, not the agri business. Been in the market about a year and a half now. And they had what I thought were decent looking numbers. We've still got a seller there. You can see that seller sitting at 1225 sometimes sitting at 12, depending where they think they can lift it. Today got to 12, 12.40, but the stock is down a bit. The numbers in themselves, I mean, revenue growth, 19%. That's a chunky bit of growth there. Uh, we, get, we got HEPs up 12.5%, uh, return on equity at 28.5%. What strikes me, shareholder rewards dividend, weird name to call it, a dividend, 50 cents. Now, why is that surprising? because they'd said at the end of last year that they would pay a dividend at the end of this year, which is their September results. So the dividend certainly was a major surprise. I hold CMH. We talked about these a lot in last week's podcast. If you want to go dig around, you'll go find last week's. I hold CMH. Um, I don't particularly like Motus. I like We Buy Cars, but I think it's twice as, pro as expensive as all these others. So it, it's just not a cheap stock. It's trading on a PE of north of 10. Why do I want to pay north of 10? If we annualize out that, in other words, if we just double the HEPs to 3 Rand 30 and divide it into the current share price, we've got a, I'm going to need a calculator because there's too many moving parts. Spare me a second. Yeah, PE of under 4 which makes it the cheapest of all of these vehicle stocks. It is cheap, but I need to see the price action coming through. And at this point in time, I mean, that 13-ish odd is really the big resistance zone, and I need to see some price action before I can possibly get excited there. BHP Bulletin uh, had their put up or shut up, shut up deadline was last Wednesday. It was extended to yesterday. They didn't come with a offer that Anglo liked. Anglo didn't want to extend it. So BHP Group have walked away from the Anglo American proposed. I'm going to say merger. It was a takeover. Let's be clear, it was a takeover. What happens now? Well, what we've got, BHP out the window, what we've got is Anglo American saying, don't worry, we have got a plan. Okay, so their plan is to disinvest the beers, uh, disinvest Anglo Platinum, and keep the rest broadly. Uh, fair enough to that. But do we get another offer? Has Rio Tinto looked at this and been speaking with some uh, 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 sort of MA bigwigs? Uh, maybe Glencore. Is there perhaps another offer waiting in the wings? It's going to have to be chunkier. Certainly, uh, Anglo American kept on saying, you just don't value us enough. We're just not interested. Thanks, but no thanks. The stock I sold some time ago, I'd held it forever. Part of my holding it was that I quite liked the dividend yield. Uh, it had a really chunky dividend yield of over 10%, but that dividend yield has just disappeared, and we are talking Metro Farm. So I got out around the 3 ish odd 20, I don't know, somewhere around here, I suppose, 22 or maybe late 21. But the, the dividend was starting to fade. We can see pressure on the share price. Uh, and essentially, uh, uh, Sabcap Investments, 
sold their stake. They just said, thanks, but we are taking our money and running. Why? Don't know. But obviously, it's not rushing it for them either. The dividend yield has fallen to around six. It used to be closer to around 10-ish or so. So the dividend yield's fallen off. They're struggling. They're struggling with the digital side of businesses. But there's another point to hear it as well. They are a, a SA Inc. business. Not only do they operate in, in South Africa, and they've got some other businesses offshore, I know, but they are still mostly South Africa. But forget the big companies, the Standard Banks and the like, who they do great guns for. It's the smaller, mid-size, small-size, SME, mom-and-pops, who would normally use Metrofile, who are under the cosh, who are closing businesses, who are doing less business, and therefore less work needed for Metrofile. And your problem there is you lose a client, you just lose a revenue stream, and it's, it's gone, and it's that sort of annuity income that was coming through. So as I said, I'd long since got out, but uh, things suddenly got, yeah, uh, fairly real here as Subcap. It's Chris Seabook suddenly decided they want out. We don't know who the buyer of the shares were. We'll find that in time. Next couple of weeks, well, next couple of weeks, in the next hour, uh, we have got the uh, Saab MPC rate announcement. They're not going to change rates. Not going to happen. But then next week, we have ECB. The week over after, we have the FOMC. And the week after that, we have the Bank of England and the Swiss National Bank. Any of them likely to cut? European Central Bank. They're the one who've kind of got their inflation to where or more or less they want it. So I think they, they'll do a quarter percent next week. That will excite markets. I don't think we'll see anything from the English, the Swiss, or the Americans, or the South Africans for that matter. We're simply not going to get any cuts at this point in the cycle. But now we're starting to get into the July, August, September Things start to get perhaps a little bit more interesting. I still think that locally we can see a September and November rate cut, quarter percent each, take it down to 11 and a quarter for prime. We are as a bit of a ways to go, make no mistake about that. But uh, my sense is that we would have found the, the inflation will be good enough towards the target. The risk remains to the upside. The RAND at the moment, I mean, if the, if, if, if the RAND suddenly blows to 19, 1950 or something like that, then inflation is not gone. But if it can hold that 1850, maybe even get back into the low 18s, then suddenly maybe, and I stress the maybe, we're back in biz and then we can start to see some rate cuts. FOMC, as I said, I don't think they'll cut September. I think they'll do a July and then maybe a November as well. Again, we're talking quarter percent rate cuts up front. We're not going to go anything too exciting at this point. And I'm going to park it there as a shorter show. Voting day was a lot more challenging perhaps than anticipated, uh, but we'll be back to normal. My recording late Wednesday afternoons from next week onwards. As I say, sort of normal business will resume. And for the moment, we're just going to do the shorter one. We'll wait. Uh, the key thing, election results. And we're a long way to go. So the official announcement from the IEC is due 6 p.m. on uh, Sunday evening. But we should by Friday lunchtime at the latest, have a fairly good idea where we are. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Someone said I must blink when I play that. Fair enough. Do I not bl Surely I blink. I don't know. I, I will practice blinking, I promise. So we're going to park it there. Remember, uh, events, justonelap.com slash events. And go to justonelap.com and find that commodity webcast with Johan Erasmus. The man just knows stuff. And the ETF, the gold ETF from them, is the cheaper between it and the ABSA GLD. Everyone loves the GLD. It's giant, but this one actually is cheaper. 0.05%. Oh, while we're on that, we've got some 10x uh, ETFs that are changing. Go and find that at justonelap.com slash ETFs. Their div tracks, local dividend uh, aristocrats, and their smart beta, which is, it was better beta with Nedbank, and then it moved equal weighted, then it moved to core shares, then they turned it into a smart, and now they're merging all of these into a top 50 ETF. My name is Simon. We'll chat again next week. Until then, look after yourself if you can. As always, Look after somebody else as well.